Welcome to Psychology to Daf. We are in Gemara Sukkah Daf Chaf, and today we're going to talk about the idea of achieving forgiveness for one's ancestors, and it's based on a phrase uh, of the Gemara Nomad Aleph, which used the phrase Hareni Kaporas Mishgavo. Now, the phrase Hareni Kaporas Mishgavo literally means uh, let me be a uh, an atonement for his resting place. And Rashi explains over here, and also in Kedushin on Daf Lamed, that, or Lamed Aleph, that um, one can somehow or another achieve penance for their father or their master, so like a Talmud for a Rebbe, by suffering. And this is actually codified in the Halacha, Ramban, Sharagmul, uh, Mem Aleph, Gemara Kedushin, Daf Lamed Aleph, Mabez, Shulchan Aruch, Yeradeya, Reish Mem, Sif Tes, that one should say this phrase about a deceased father or mother when repeating Torah in their name for 12 months after their death, but not longer because the tradition is that no Jew stays in Gehenna longer than 12 months. Now, it's much easier to understand intuitively how giving charity and saying Kaddish, which is a public sanctification of God's name, that achieves penance because um, it's bringing something good and it's being done possibly and partially because of the good influence of the deceased person in their lifetime. But how could someone achieve penance by suffering for somebody else? And it's an interesting question. Rav Tzadok in Tekanas HaShav and Perak Yud Aleph addresses this somewhat uh, by simply implying that there's a broad principle in Judaism that forgiveness can be achieved uh, for one's descendants. Uh, by one's descendants for their ancestors. For whatever it's worth, it's worth, we do find a reverse situation operating in a biblical uh, scenario where Rivka tells Yaakov, Olai kiloscha b'ni, let your curse be unto me, my son. However, you should see over there the Mepharshim and Bracious Chavsayim Perik and Gimel, particularly the Bravanel and Ibn Ezra, but many other Mepharshim also, who cannot take this statement literally because, in fact, it's theologically uh, difficult to understand how you can take on somebody else's punishment. Now, the Taz in Yorodea, Reish Mem, uh, uh, Os Yud Beis, raises a very interesting question. We know by Kaddish, there's a rule that you only say Kaddish for 11 months, because there's an understanding that you don't want to imply that your parent was so evil that he or she needed so much penance that they got the full maximum sentence in Ganem. So we stop at 11 months. So Taz says, why don't we do the same by Hareni Kaparis Mishkavo? So to this, he gives a very interesting answer. He says that Kaddish a person can refrain from saying, and if a person refrains from saying it, there's nothing implied because it's a passive act. However, when one mentions Torah in a parent's name, you will have to either say Zichron Levracha or Hareni Kabars Meshkavel. You will have to say one over the other. Therefore, if you have to already say something, he says it is very important that you say the truth. And you don't know, perhaps your parents still need prayers and still need penance even in that last month. Maybe they did get the maximum sentence in Gehenna, unfortunately. So he says because of that, you have to be honest and accurate. There's no euphemisms. Now this is, by the way, an interesting example, and we've seen this in other places in psychology, the Daf, how important it is to have honesty and accuracy in prayer. That somehow or another, it could creates a spiritual and metaphysical disruption if you are not completely honest in your prayer. And therefore, even here, one should not say Zechron Levracha. One should say Kaparis Mishkavo because one should be praying for their parent, even on the outside chance that they do need the Kapara. In addition, the Taz offers us another explanation that Kaddish is recited publicly and therefore can be more of an embarrassment as opposed to Hareni Kaparis Mishkavo, which is said in all kinds of scenarios.